Kay and, and uh, Doug and Meredith and Daniel, uh, we kind of doing this thing on behalf of the entire Chipola family, and uh, it's not the first party we've had here. This was a place that Mike Keenan truly loved, and we had, I think over the 11 years that he came down here, we probably had 40 parties in here, and Mike, Mike loved it. So the meal is uh, one of his favorites. I know he didn't eat this in New Jersey because uh, they would have laughed him out of uh, the five-star restaurant that he was eating in. But catfish and cheese grits and uh, coleslaw is a good fare uh, down here, and uh, iced tea, so Mike, and hush puppies, so Mike loved that. So the music track that you heard were their songs from uh, Chipola when we were playing there. And uh, I remember them well. You're going to see a tape in a little bit. We were friends uh, 48 years. That's a long time. I don't want to get into that. This is a celebration, and that's the way we're going to try to keep this thing. Uh, the front porch gang, uh, when Keenan would come down here, uh, we would uh, invariably, we'd eat on Friday night, and we'd sit on the uh, front porch for for 10, 11 years, and there was a lot of BS out there, an extreme amount <laughs> out there. And as the night grew longer, it got stronger. But, uh, the audio is from Keenan's songs. He loved them. I want you to hear one song that was done by the Atlanta Rhythm Section. A lot of you don't know who that is, but they did Georgia Pine. And when Keenan heard that song, he'd go a little bit crazy. You know, he'd go a little, just a little bit nuts. <laughs> But all the other songs came from that particular year, 1965-66. So uh, it's all about Keenan here tonight. Uh, Helen Keller said, and she was an inspiring character in America, she said that I would rather walk in the dark with a friend than in the light alone. That would be Mike. <laughs> I can assure you that that would be Mike. Oh. Another one by, by Ali, talking about friendship. He said, if you, if you don't understand the meaning of friendship, you've missed one of the greatest things in life. And uh, if Mike Keenan was your friend, you had a real friend. He would stay with you. Now, before we go any farther, it's a, it's a pretty good distance from, from uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey down here. And uh, Keenan came here in 65, and oh, you talk about a, a shot, a change for Mike Keenan. It was unbelievable. And for everybody else. Because it, 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 it was a substantial, substantial difference in the cultures. Coach Johnson, I, I remember the first day out there with Keenan, and we were out there trying to dunk the basketball. Jack Peacock and I had some sticky stuff on our hands, and Matt Daniel and uh, so Keenan comes out there and he bounces it one time and he goes about a foot and a half above the goal and just ducks it back in, backhanded like that, you know. And said, mm. <laughs> this guy has something else. But he wanted to leave because the culture was so dis different. And we all, as you know, when you go off to college for the first time and you go a thousand miles away, there's a very, very uh, substantial amount of adjustment that you have to go through. And Mike was having that. Plus, add to that, that different culture, different sense of humor, and Mike would fight back at you, you know. He didn't give in to anybody. And that was all we wanted, you know. <laughs> we were wearing him out. And so, uh, after about the second week, he went in and he told Coach Johnson, he said, you know, I want to go home. And Coach said, Trammell, can you spend a little time with him? And I said, yeah. I'll spend a little time with him. And so Friday came and we were, he was in my white falcon with him. And he said, where, Coach Johnson spotted us. And he said, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going to take him home. He said, to Bluntstown? I said, yeah. He said, oh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, He's far too good a player. He didn't mean that. But, uh, <laughs> but we got out here and we had a great time. I took him to the American Legion and there were about 200 uh, people and every Friday night Cliff Ellis and his band would play and we had a really big time. Tracy and Howell and all your Bluntstown boys remember those good times. And, and Keenan says, pretty girls? I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, he says, what do I do? I said, just smile. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> but, uh, he, 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 did, he did well with that. He really did.
I do remember a, a couple of experiences I'd like to share as a friend, uh, you know, and it wasn't Jay Mitchell's physical science class. Uh, Keenan and I didn't have that together. I, just, I had my golfing buddies in there with me uh, over in the uh, natural science building then in the big, big room, auditorium. But uh, on a Thursday night, we had a speech class, and we walked in there, and we had an adjunct instructor who was a preacher. And there was at least 10 of us in the class, and Mike came in there and sat down, sat down not too far from him. The <laughs> preacher asked us to each tell us their name, your name, and where you were from. And I said I was from Bluntstown. Well, that was automatic radiant for me because Robert had already taken him down there. And I did see him at the American Legion that night. Wasn't a crowd of him either. But anyway, uh, we got through that, <clears throat> and the teachers told us that, uh, you know, class is going to be 60%. Your grade is going to be 60% presentation and 40% test. You know, in his calm voice, as Mike would have, he said, In New Jersey, I can handle that 60%. That's, this is over. <laughs> and, you know, the, the teacher looked at him. And, you know, for those, these boys over here have more stories than I do. But anyway, that's when I remember most because that's when I first met him. But when he talked to the speech teacher, into us going out to a place called the caravan to have class, <laughs> hey, you know, hands down. That's all I can tell you on that. You know, we all, we all knew Mike as we came to some of the functions here, and that's where I, I saw him. I saw him on the front porch a couple of times, I think, when I was over here touring the house. Uh, but it is so wonderful that we've got people from all over the country <laughs> that have been impacted by Chicago College. We had there are if we took a survey, I'm sure we would never find the, the exact number of how many people's lives have been affected by the education, by the athletics, by the people of Chipola. And I am so proud to be a part of that. So Dr. Crow, thank you for letting me be a part of it. And I know that we are all very grateful and I appreciate you coming today and supporting this effort. We got the three Keenan kids in here, and Mike was right, yeah, we didn't call him Mike. We call him King. Everybody, uh, I heard Tracy Clemens about a year ago. We were we were down there uh, dove hunting or quail hunting, and he said uh, he'd been down here ten years. And he said, King, what's your first name? <laughs> 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 let's let's have a, let's have Mike's children stand up here. We got Katie and Kelly and Brian. Y'all stand up. Let's give them a hand, folks. Thanks for coming. First off, I didn't get invited to speak. Um, I asked Coach Tram if it'd be all right if I said something uh, about about Mike. So, uh, you know, I, like he said, when I got the job at Chipotle, I was uh, 26 years old. Sort of, I guess, got thrown into the fire. And, uh, you know, what I remember is that year we started off 18-1. We're number three in the country. I'm sitting here thinking, man, I'm a, I'm a great coach. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, the next thing I know, we have a guy get hurt who's our leading scorer, and we, we go three and eight our last 11 games of the year. Don't make the state tournament. But what I remember from that year is a guy coming down from New Jersey, and whether we were playing at Tallahassee, whether we were playing at Gulf Coast, whether we were playing at Pensacola, wherever we were playing those 12 conference games, he was there. And, uh, you know... That first year, we didn't get to have too many meals on the front porch. The only way you got a meal on the front porch on Sunday is if you won that Saturday night game. <laughs> so uh, my first year, I didn't get too many of those meals. But, you know, I'll just never forget, um, you know, being a young coach, you know, sometimes sometimes you really don't know or, or understand where you're really at. But, I mean, he showed me so much support, you know, in my three years. And it wasn't, you know, it was genuine support. It wasn't telling me how to do things, it was, hey coach, you're doing a good job, you know, I understand why you're not winning, you got guys hurt, and uh, you know, I always respected that, is that not only did he play here, but he came here and he spent, you know, two or three months of his, of his life, of his year, every game we played, he was there not only supporting me, but supporting our guys, and then whether we won or lost, he still supported us, and you know, that was important to me, that helped me out a lot of my career, and you know, Ten years from now, if I'm the head coach at Kentucky, uh, Mike Keenan's going to be a guy that I remember that influenced my career as a coach in a big way. So, he was a great guy. This year was really the first year 
that when we would have a recruit on campus, that your dad wasn't there. He would always come out to our, you know, our lunches. He would watch them. He would evaluate them and give us his opinion and to kind of have that support. I think that's what really has separated our athletics from other junior colleges because people really do care and it is a close-knit family to, uh, for him to spend those two or three months down here and for us to have the opportunity to get to know him. I just want to thank you for, you know, sharing your dad with us and touching our lives and making, uh, you know, our program a lot better. So thank you. But on behalf of the Appreciation Club, we want to thank all of you for coming. We're so proud to have Mike's kids down here. Thank y'all for coming so much and helping us celebrate this. And uh, like Robert said, uh, if you do, if you can, contribute something to this fund, uh, we really would appreciate it. Thank all y'all for coming. Uh, the teammates that were with Keenan over there on that great team, I'll tell you about that team. That team uh, we were, Billy Smith is cooking here. One night we were out front last year. And uh, Mike, Mike loved that team, the experience. And if you've ever played on a team, when the chemistry's right and everything comes together, it's like being, I think, like being in the military and you're in a foxhole. And you go through so much together and you win and you win and you win. And we did, we were fourth in the nation, probably not as skilled as some teams that finished below us, but we were good. I tell you, we're going to go to the uh, film now. So I want you all to give your close attention to this, and I think you'll be moved by this. So. You know, tonight we're celebrating the life of Mike Keenan. Mike Keenan was a fan of the Villagers. Uh, you know him as a basketball player, a person that went to Chipola that had Chipola in his heart. The one thing you might not have known about Mike is that he absolutely loved his music. You know, he loved the villagers. He loved coming to hear the village play. And in his passing, we wanted to pass along a tribute to uh, his family and friends uh, because it has been a loss for all of us. But at the same time, we're celebrating a person that meant so much to Chipola. Mike actually played in a group, uh, I want to say the group was called the Four Chucks? Supporters. The Supporters. Uh, and Alan Myers, our drummer, actually played. We played a hoot nanny at Chipola. And I think one of the biggest smiles I saw on his face was at that hoot, and then we came in behind. So, we're going to sing a song. We're kind of here playing around uh, a little bit, but this is a tribute. This is a song that Mike Keenan really loved to hear the villagers play. And he was friends of George Boyer and Walter Dover and Alan Myers and Dan Trotman, Andy Murray and Cliff Ellis, the villagers. And the villagers to Mike Keenan and his family, this is for you.
a thing to lose. And if a fellow looks at you, it's for sure your little eye will be a wing. Just like a ghost, you've been a haunt in my dreams. So like a ghost on Halloween. Love is kind of crazy with a spooky little girl like you. Celebrate the life of Mike Keenan. Uh, my name is Keenan. I was fortunate enough to play here in uh, 1965 and 1966 with uh, Coach Johnson's team, and I, I didn't have the first. I don't have the first name. My name has always been Keenan here. It's been Keenan this, Keenan that, and uh, there are so many memories. My first name is Mike, uh, and there's so many memories about Coach Johnson that I could allude to right now, but there's just not time. But uh, I'll tell one quick story since I have 30 seconds. Robert Trammell and I have been friends for 47 years. Uh, we played basketball on that team. I met him that very first day here at Chipotle. And we went over to see Coach Johnson periodically. And prior to Coach's health going down the last few weeks of his life, I said to Trammell, I said, let's go over and see Coach. And we called David. He said, OK. And we went over. And we walked in the house. And Trammell walks in. He goes, uh, Coach is watching TV. David, you might remember this. Coach is watching TV. And Trammell walks in. He goes, ah, Robert Trammell from uh, Blumstown, Florida. Coach says, sit down, Trammell. So I walk in. He goes, I go, uh, Mike King, I guess, New Brunswick, New Jersey. You sit down here, too, OK? <laughs> we spent about a half hour with him, replayed about every game that we played. And I uh, had an enjoyable time. And Coach Johnson has been a, had a tremendous impact on my life. And I, I thoroughly enjoy coming back here every year. And uh, I'm glad to see some of my old teammates. And this is just a wonderful thing. And I've used up all my time now. <laughs> Let me tell you all about the Keenan family. And I know this person, and my family knows it. None of us got a tighter family than they are. I mean, right there. Uh, nobody. And uh, they've been down here and stayed with us and that kind of thing. <laughs> I've been uh, kind of not calling them for three months since Mike passed or two, and they haven't called me. It's not that we don't love each other. It just takes some getting used to. And uh, so... Uh, yeah, I'd like to do an intermediate. Well, come here. Yeah. Come on, Doug. Doug is right in there. Uncle Mike. There you go. I just want to kind of pass it down because there is, there is a middle... And uh, I've known Mike since I was a little kid because of Dad playing with him. But uh, then I got to know Brian and Katie and Kelly. And I think it's appropriate that we, we do it generationally. And uh, he, he was like an uncle to me. And he loved Chipola like I do. We, I, I remember uh, growing up and seeing Omega win and all those, Carl Brown and all those people. And they don't know about it, but we know about it. And he's had his service up there, but now we have it down here, and they're able to be bear witness to what we have, the love we have for him. And this kid right here, I put him in school when he went to Miami, and uh, I was down there with my cousins, and I got him checked into his dorm room, and he is a wonderful kid, and he's got two wonderful sisters, and we're happy to have y'all, and we all love Mike Keenan. And uh, I want to give the floor to Brian. Uh, for those of you that know my dad, it wasn't too hard to get him wound up. And one of the stories I can remember where it was very easy was I borrowed his truck, which of course on the back had a Chipola college uh, bumper sticker. I, I just drove, drove around the corner of the bakery and I came back and I said, oh, you know, your car got a lot of attention. Somebody recognized your college. Like, oh, yeah. He's, so he got very excited. He said, oh, yeah, what'd they say? He's like, this pretty girl. He's like, oh, well, yeah. But she said, uh, so uh, where's Chipola? <laughs> <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> I heard about that one for a while. <laughs> it was comfortable.
comforting seeing the video with Cliff Ellis because he would talk a lot about the singing that he did and uh, I don't think any of us actually quite believed him that, he, <laughs> that people listened to that. But, uh, <laughs> Years, no matter where we were, we, we all got to enjoy it. So that was good. Uh, um, he, he, you know, he, he liked to talk a lot, and specifically he liked to tell a lot of stories, and even more specifically, it was always about Chipola. It would drive all of us nuts, because we would hear the same stories, and we would say, but you were there for two years, and you spent 40 talking about those two years. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's nights like tonight where we see everybody here and uh, being supportive, and I mean everything that Robert and um, Kay and Doug and Meredith have done, is, it goes a long way to explaining to us why he can spend 40 years talking about those two years. Um, so we're very appreciative of everything, guys, and every... Everybody coming here tonight, and uh, that's it. And long live Big Mike. I probably won't be able to say much, but I, I do want to say that um, my father, he loved his family very much. And um, when he ran out of things to say about his family and his grandchildren, he would move right into telling stories about Chipola. And I'm going to miss those stories, but I see by all the people that are here remembering him that it's important that we all you know, keep the stories alive, and I know that I'll definitely bring my family down here again, and it won't be the last, you know, time that I'm here at the camp. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. Oh, no, I have to read it. I'm sorry, because it makes me nervous. So first of all, I want to thank the channel and family for putting this event together. My dad would have loved it and loved you guys very much, and I appreciate this. I cannot put into words how much I miss my dad. I love him so much, and I know he loved me. There isn't, oh no, it went away. <laughs> um, there isn't a thing in this world he would have done for me, Katie, or Brian. And I know he loved all of you as well. He spoke often of his many fond memories of his college days he spent with all of you and the years he, and winners, the years of the winners he spent here. Story after story while sitting on the beach or at a table, sipping his favorite drink of choice at that time. If he wasn't talking about his grandkids, you better believe he was talking about one of you. He always, he was always telling us stories about his ball playing days down here and all the great times he had when he came here in the winter months. He held those memories and time so close. Even while his body was giving out to him, that never stopped these memories and stories from him being told and it was always brought a smile to his face. For this and all the things each of you did for my dad while he was here, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Those stories in my dad's memory will live on forever. Please, if you know the stories yourself, don't stop telling them. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here and see everybody. And, and some of y'all got older since I've seen you the last time. <laughs> uh, we, uh, I'm one of the ones that taught Mike how to, how to shoot uh, you know, our, our redneck eagles. Uh, buzzards out of pickup trucks driving up and down dirt roads <laughs> and uh, dove hunting and quail hunting and all kind of stuff and uh, I think he uh, he uh, had never seen anything like all of us and we certainly had never seen anything like him <laughs> but uh, he was a great guy great uh, teammate after it all the time he never gave up and he played tough and we were on a team I think the reason we won so much is because there were so many of us that were so equal, and we nearly killed each other in practice trying to get to starting positions. So I think that honed our skills and, uh, and it made us better. And of course, one that never was in jeopardy was Mike's position. <laughs> uh, his, the rest of us were killing each other for some other spot, not his. But anyway, uh, we loved him to death, and, uh, and I'm just so thankful to be here today with you guys. Jack Peacock's not going to say anything, but. Jack Peacock's uh, position was not in jeopardy either. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Jack was an outstanding player, very much a competitor. And uh, that team, everybody on there was about 6'1", Jack, to about 6'8", but mostly about 6'4", 
And it was a grind in practice, my goodness. That was right when, so long ago, folks, that they were just coming out with VCR. Mr. Bales was our sponsor out there at the Pony Farm. We were well sponsored. <laughs> Chipola's always had a lot of support. And uh, they put the VCR, so Ms. Bales couldn't be there, so they put the VCR on to watch practice. And they accidentally left the audio on, and they sent that out there to her. She said, well, Charlie, I didn't know those boys talk like that. <laughs> it was brutal, brutal, I'm telling you. Kenan's absolutely, in my life, I've never seen anybody like him. He's tough, he's good a friend, he's solid. He started out in 65 just like he finished this year. Just the same person, 100%. He said what he thought. He was a supportive, loyal, loyal friend to, to us, all of us, and to Chipotle. <laughs> if you were looking at the table while Mike was talking, you might have noticed who was sitting there. It was Dale Clay, myself, and a Robert, a Rabbit Hill, and Hobbs. Uh, I hope that Mr. Hobbs uh, spent a lot of time right here with him, uh, as most of you know. Uh, Ken would come down sometimes in December or January and spend until April or May in one of these old houses around here. And uh, during the, the tournament, myself and Rabbit and Dale Clay, usually, I've been here for the last several years, but all of us would spend the time together in one of these uh, pre construction houses that probably still maintain. <laughs> So, and we had a wonderful time, uh, and of course, Ken was always interested in the Chipotle program, in particular the Chipotle basketball. I had an opportunity to meet the three of you, and here's one of the rare times I'm home with you. So I'm not interested. <coughs> but uh, I have one good story to share with you. I don't know if you noticed the bartender out there, but Big A. And Big Aaron and myself and Dale Clay, uh, we got my vehicle. He got a button to stop it. It's been about four or five years ago. <laughs> it's been about four or five years ago, whatever the year that uh, Chipotle went to the Nationals, and I drove out, and we drove out. And unfortunately, Dale got sick, and so we had to leave early. But uh, having live basically together for four days there. <laughs> we all got to know each other much better. Uh, and just saying a <clears throat> quick prayer for, and I'll call him Mike in this case, and I'm a poor reader, but I'll do the best I can, but this, I think, uh, fits him and his beliefs about as well as it, as, as it could be spoken. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall soft upon the fields. May green be the grass you walk on. May blue be the skies above you. May pure be the joy that surrounds you. May true be the hearts that love you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Very appropriate in an Irish prayer. That's right. Kenan was uh, <laughs> half Hungarian and 100% Irish. <laughs> his grandmother sent us Hungarian cookies all the time. I, that was why he and I were such a good friend. All right, folks, we have a uh, time honored tradition down here at the Trammell Place that uh, we do uh, Amazing Grace. So we'll ask you all to stand. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that I say. Oh, uh -huh. 
was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious dear that grace of the hour I first believe when we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We Mike, we miss you. We're going to eat now, Mike. And uh, folks, thanks to all of you for coming. We really do appreciate it. And uh, mostly, mostly, we appreciate the Keenan children coming down here. Let's give them another hand, folks.